Hi everyone. Um, I know I usually uh, post videos of my singing or um, home videos and whatever, but um, I haven't really been able to sing very much lately because uh, I don't know if you can really hear it in my voice, but um, my voice is really scratchy and it gets hoarse a lot. Um, that's one of the things I'm dealing with. Um, so anyways, uh, I've been uh, recently diagnosed with lupus and um, been watching lots of uh, lupus patients um, on YouTube doing um, video blogs. And uh, I was inspired to start one of my own. So um, this is my first vlog. Uh, and um, I figure I'll start by telling you my story um, of how I became uh, diagnosed with lupus. So um, I just want to first start off by saying that growing up, um, I was a pretty healthy child. I rarely ever had a cold or a flu, um, especially in high school. Didn't have the flu at all in high school, and I may have only had a cold once or twice. Um, and other than that, I was healthy. Um, in grade 10, I, um, I had swelling in my knees, um, and that was diagnosed as a juvenile arthritis, and I was put on naproxen for that. And I took naproxen for about one to two years, I think, and then I didn't need it anymore. Um, my knees were fine. Uh, my right knee would occasionally from time to time get swollen, and sore but I would only have to take like one naproxen and it would go away and then it would be like months and months before it would swell up again um, so I mean I was pretty much fine um, uh, although I now wonder if I even had juvenile arthritis that could have been the beginning of my lupus perhaps I don't know but um, anyways Basically everything started in September 2002 after I got a black henna temporary tattoo at the X and I'm going to talk more about the black henna um, temporary tattoos in another video because there is some important information that I think people should hear about that um, because it is a possibility that it triggered a flare in my lupus. Um, though it, it's not totally proven, but there are some dangerous things about black henna that I want people to be aware of, but that'll be another video, um, otherwise this one will be too long. Um, so I mean, it started a week after I got the tattoo that I got a red raised rash in the shape of the tattoo. It was very itchy, pimply. I went to the doctor and he gave me a topical cream and um, I used it that day when I got home. The next morning I woke up um, and I was covered from head to toe in red, itchy, burning hives. And, um, you know, originally the hives would just be there when I would wake up in the morning and then slowly disappear as the day went on and I could still at least carry on with my day. However, I would say over the next week or so, it got to the point that the hives never went away. They were there 24-7, all the time. Um, they, sometimes they got this big, like almost, it looked like I was scalded. It looked like my body was scalded. But um, they were burning and they were itching and they were hot to touch. And they were just constantly there and I could not stand wearing socks, I couldn't stand wearing shoes or my bras. I wanted to stay in my pajamas all day. That was the, the bare minimum of clothes that I could wear that I could tolerate without itching like crazy. Um, and for the most part I just wanted to sleep because when I was sleeping I wasn't itching. Um, so uh, that was the beginning of Endless amounts of blood work. I was probably going for blood work every week, it seemed like. Um, going from doctor to doctor over the next year, I saw allergists, dermatologists, rheumatologists, respirologists, um, I mean, every kind of specialist you could think of. And, um, you know, they all ran 
their own tests and pretty much everything came back fine. Um, the only thing that they found right near the beginning in September of 2002 is that I had hypothyroidism. Um, in a four week period of time I had put on a ton of weight, I would say probably like 30 pounds or more. Um, and most of it seemed to be swelling. Um, my feet, my ankles, the lower parts of my legs were so swollen, my socks were leaving huge indentations. And, um, you know, my face, when I would wake up in the morning, my face would be so swollen. Um, my eyes would look all swollen. Um, my face, my lips would be swollen, um, especially on the inside, right in here, it would be all puffed out. And sometimes I would even feel swelling on the roof of my mouth. Um, there would be like a huge bulge there. And so um, I just, I had all this swelling and um, I gained so much weight in like a short period of time. And I had always been a very thin person. Um, never had trouble with weight at all. I could eat whatever I wanted and never worry about gaining anything. Um, so they, they found out that I had hypothyroidism and started me on medication for that. And I started to see an endocrinologist because of that. Um, and then my family doctor did notice that I had an irregular heartbeat. Excuse me. Um, and uh, like I had extra heartbeats in there. But he didn't seem too concerned about it. Um, but then my symptoms started to progress. Um, I started to get feeling uh, sensations on my body that felt like I, had, I was severely bruised. It just felt like I had been beaten up all over my body. Just to go like this on my arm was painful. Um, so I had this bruise feeling on my arms here. I had them on my ribs, on my stomach. Even just walking, I could feel like my stomach was completely bruised all over. Um, I had it on my shins and my thighs. Um, just this bruised feeling. And um, I guess the, the doctors, they um, labeled it as some kind of a muscle pain. And then I started to get short of breath very easily, just going up a few stairs or even just walking. And I started to get really bad chest pains that started about here and they moved around to the back. And so that's when my uncle said I should just go to the ER. Um, so we went and I ended up being referred to um, a specialist at the hospital. I can't remember what her title was exactly, but um, she did a 24-hour uh, Holter heart monitor on me that showed that I could have gone into cardiac arrest at any given moment. And so they started me on uh, metoprolol and um, to, to try and get, to try and decrease the amount of extra heartbeats. And um, so that's what they did with that. And uh, so, um, yeah, with that, I was on that medication and um, I've been on that ever since, well, until recently they switched it over to a different one, but um, pretty much the same concept. And uh, so my symptoms just continued. I continued with the highs all the time. Um, I had allergy testing for everything you can think of and I had no allergies to anything. Um, they just couldn't figure out what was causing the highs and they couldn't figure out how to get rid of them. And um, I dealt with those highs for almost a year until I finally found a dermatologist who uh, had some knowledge about black henna and um, chronic hives and he put me on a combination of um, three medications, um, Reactin, Arius, and Zatitin. And those finally uh, got rid of my hives, but I had to keep taking the medication just to make sure that the hives didn't come back. Um, 